Hey friends, I just wanted to share some thoughts with you from the Lord from this morning's time spent with him. And I want to talk to you about why do you think people don't want anything to do with the church? Why are young people leaving and not coming back? And it all has to do with relevance. But the problem is what is relevant? And there have been so many churches that are trying to be relevant. In town here, we have a church called the Relevant Church. You know, what is relevance? And the whole problem is that we are looking to make things a carnal relevance or a worldly relevance or relevance according to the wisdom of men by trying to have flashy music and light shows and you know, activities that are more of a social group, <clears throat> excuse me, than um, what the church was called as the ecclesia, um, which is the word that's used in Matthew 18 when Jesus said, I will build my church. He wasn't using the word church because that word wasn't even invented until I think, you know, the third century. Um, so Jesus didn't use the word church. He used the word ecclesia, which is um, an assembly called out. Um, it's actually for another teaching for another time. It's, it's not just a group of people. It's a ruling group of people. Another story for another time. But um, because we've used the wisdom of this world and tried to make things relevant to this world, that's why we are losing people because in all of our human efforts to make the church relevant we have made the church irrelevant so what is relevance to god that's what's relevant what is relevant to god if we want to become relevant to this society and relevant to the world we live in but more importantly relevance in a eternal significant way eternally significant way we are irre irrelevant when it comes to eternal significance when we try to make the church relevant to worldly significance and in a way to draw people we are just wooing their souls and not the spiritual destiny that was birthed on the inside of them before the world was created we were in the mind of god and he created a plan for us and he worked um, out our entire destiny in his heart. He, the, a book was written about us in heaven before the world even began. And then in the fullness of time, he caused us to be um, put into our mother's womb and breathed the breath of life into us. And we were a spirit in existence long before we were in the womb. That's why abortion is a tragedy. That's why abortion is murder. It's not about when conception takes place in the womb. It's about when our destinies and our lives are conceived in the mind of God, which was before the foundation of the world. That's why abortion is murder. Side note, parenthetical statement. That's why if you vote for people who want to kill babies, you are complicit. In parentheses, another story for another time. No offense. <laughs> well, maybe we need to be offended, but anyway. So relevance has to do with eternal significance. And I read an article with some millennials saying why we're leaving the church. And they're like, you don't care about social justice and you don't include us. That's all a part of this um, culture that we've allowed to form with I in the center. It's all about me. It's all about me. Don't hurt my feelings. Don't offend me. But 2 Timothy 2.4 says that no soldier entangles himself with the things of this world because then he can't please the one who called him to be a soldier, paraphrased. So true soldiers don't care about the things of this world. Now, I was never in the military. I've watched a lot of documentaries, though. And those guys, especially the special forces guys, man, they are zoned in on their mission. And that's what's relevant. That's what's relevant. Being zoned in, not on our mission, not on our dreams, but on the mission of God and the dreams of God, which is reconciling the world to himself. That's why we're not relevant. 
We're not relevant because in Luke 5, 17, the Bible says that the power of God was present to heal. And the power is not present in the church because we don't let Jesus build the church. We build the church according to what we think is relevant, according to what society says. And we preach rah, rah, me messages that puff up the soul and puts a Band-Aid on the wounds we receive during the week and then sends us back out trying to make us feel better about ourselves. And everyone needs encouragement. I'm not, I'm not cutting on that. But what I'm saying is in the process of crafting these messages to make people feel good and how they can succeed in this carnal world and this mortal world that is perishing day by day, without speaking to their destiny and their eternal significance, that's why there's no power in the church. Jesus says, okay, I can either build the church or you can build it. If I build it, my power will be present there. If you build it, it's up to you to do your thing because I'm not in that. He's in eternally significant things. And here's why I feel the Lord showed me that millennials are so into social justice because there is a seed in their spirit to rule the earth spiritually. God created all of us to be a part of the family. It's us to, up to us to choose whether we want to be a part of it. But there is a seed of destiny to save the world, which is God's mission. But it's not the physical carnal thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's the the creation groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what they are hungry for. And they don't even know it because we don't preach eternal significance. So what is relevant that we are called to be ambassadors for Christ in 2 Corinthians 5.20, that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation in 2 Corinthians 5.18. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and I life, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what's relevant. My life is hid with Christ in God in Col Col Colossians 3.3. 3. That's what's relevant. That's what people are hungry for. They don't even know it. So let's come together and pray and believe God to raise up leaders, church planners, and that's a whole different story. It's not what we've been doing, but people who will raise up young people, old people, that we will have a paradigm shift and even what the church is supposed to look like, that there will be raised up in this time people who are hungering and thirsting after the righteousness of God, not after mere social issues. If the church takes its place and rules and reigns with Christ in this world, that will be the answer to social issues. If there is a wave and a great awakening to sweep the face of the earth, when the glory of the Lord covers the earth like the waters covers the sea, Social injustice will be wiped out because the love of God will rule and reign in the hearts and our minds will be set on things above and not of the earth. And then when we become like Jesus, that's when everything will shift. So I'm calling right now for a relevant church to be birthed, one that Jesus is allowed to build based on etern eternally significant and relevant things and not the relevance that we see, not the seeker-friendly church things that we see. Because Jesus says, if anyone wants to come after me, you need to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. That's not popular. <laughs> That's not relevant in the earthly wisdom of men. So... God bless you. Keep that in prayer. Start declaring it and decreeing it. And let's see a shift in the earth. God bless you. And I speak to the destiny in you that's crying out for these things. Because there is a seed of destiny in you that is crying out for truth. That is crying out for relevance. That is crying out for satisfaction. And you will never experience satisfaction by feeding yourself on earthly things. Everything in this world that's given to us, all the blessings are just tools 
to build the kingdom of God. Jesus gave back in Deuteronomy, I think it's 818, he gave a, the, them the power to get wealth. Why? So that his covenant will be established in the earth. That's why. That's what you're hungry for. That's what's missing in your life. That's what's missing in this generation. And so I call it forth and I speak life to it in the name of Jesus. God bless you till next time.